What would you do with a lot of access to wood chips for your garden? Would you make a walkway? Would you bury some of that? Or in this video, we're gonna be making some compost with it. This is a long-term composting way to do it. So if you don't have any patience, this is not for you. You know I don't have any patience, but this is gonna teach me some because this is gonna take a year to break down. Let's build it. What's going on my plant peoples? I'm the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, house plants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And welcome to my bioreactor. Well, it's a play on a Johnson Soup bioreactor. And that is basically a way of passively composting. Now you have active composting and passive composting. When you're actively composting, that is when you're turning your compost yourself, manually doing all that. And you have to turn it at ideally it would be nice if you do it like twice a week or something like that. But that's also if you have manual labor or you don't have any back pain. So I have obviously chronic back pain, so I can't be turning anything. And frankly, if you have a significant other, <clears throat> Jose, that will not turn my compost as frequently as I would like it to be, that means I needed to come up with another way of making some compost passively. And that is where I came up to, well, I have found or discovered the Johnson Soup Bioreactor. Now this may not exactly be the exact way of doing it, but I used the materials that what I had on hand in my backyard. So that is what we're gonna do today and I'm gonna show you how in the world I did this. Making a Johnson Soup bioreactor is not for the faint of heart and especially not for those who don't have patience. And you already know I don't have any patience, but I'm learning patience, especially, hello Freddy. Freddy, subscribers, subscribers. Before we get started, if you could smash that like button, I really appreciate it. It lets YouTube know that you love my videos. Thank you, Freddy, Freddy approves. It lets YouTube know that you love my videos and it pushes them up in the algorithm. Also, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm using this today because of course I lost my microphone. And last but not least, I live stream every Sunday on 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or not every Sunday, but every other Sunday. You can catch me there. Back to the video. That's not the only way of making your bioreactors. There is another uh, guy on YouTube that I follow, Diego something. Anyway, I'll drop his link to his channel down in the description below. He's the one that really did really a lot of experiments on how to, or different ways of making your bioreactors. That is an awesome video to watch. First thing that you're gonna need is wood chips. Now, whether you buy them, you get a tree cut down, or you have you know a neighbor or someone that has the access to the wood chips, that's totally up to you how you you know however you get it after you got your wood chips you're gonna need pallets because the pallets is what's gonna create the outside of it and also the base of your bioreactor next thing we're gonna use as the siding of the walls of the pallet is landscape fabric you take those pallets and connect them together with nails screws and whatever else and make a square or a rectangle I have a fence around my garden that is added support but you take those pallets and then you find a way to connect them all together using nails screws whatever you have on hand to make a square or a rectangle shape then jose is going to use some nails to secure that landscape fabric all the way around the entire would-be bioreactor shape i don't have a video of it but i used some landscape fabric to cover the floor as well wow. i did it because i did not want all of my compost getting in contact with the ground so that means all the weeds that were on the ground would you know contact into my compost and I didn't want that. There's different type of wire meshes that you can use to make your tubing for the inside of the compost. This is like one by one. Um, if this is what you have, you can use that. I think I used something a little thinner than this, smaller than this. I think it was like a half inch by half inch, but it doesn't matter. You take this and then you just take some zip ties or whatever you can use to just kind of create a tube around this. This is what we're gonna put inside and this is also gonna promote a lot of oxygenation, which is what we need. I guess I didn't film this part, but you take a wire metal mesh and you're going to create a tube out of it. The bioreactor needs a lot of oxygen circulation throughout of this compost pile. If it does not get enough oxygen, the whole compost will become anaerobic. That means without oxygen, and that's when your compost pile starts to smell really bad and the flies and the maggots start showing up. And that is not a good look and that is not what we're going for. We want lots of circulation of oxygen. That is why we're gonna put these tubes in between the entire rectangle row. I've seen in other people's videos, they've used PVC pipes with a bunch of holes in them. You can use that also. Chicken wire would not work because it is not stable enough. You make it look easy. 
You make it look easy. Oh, someone's filling this bioreactor, someone has to water. There has to be a lot of water that's entering into this bioreactor because this is the only chance it's going to get to get moisture deep inside of that bioreactor compost. So you water and you water good. A lot of it. If you think you've watered enough, keep watering. After you've put your landscape fabric on the ground, now we start filling. This is Jose's job because this is where the manual labor and the back pain is not for me. He's going to be filling this up a quarter of the way. This landscape fabric actually works out because there's a bunch of lines there. So you can stop at every line and fill in with a bunch of greens, some cow manure or whatever kind of fertilizer you have. And then you could just keep building almost like a lasagna. Yep. Go for it. I've reached one of those lines and now it is time to throw in some of my compost goodies. Leftover food scraps, leftover garden scraps. It's all going in there in this lasagna of a compost. Once I lay down these greens, next is going to be manure. You can have you can put what you can put whatever type of manure that you have handy and available. If you can only buy bags, that's what you do. If you have chickens, use that too. And we're just gonna be layering it up watering all over again we cannot forget the watering and then we're going to layer on top of that with a bunch of wood chips notice that these mesh tubes that are going in there that's the only chance that this compost is going to be breathing so if your mesh tubing is not the best or you didn't add enough of those tubings to you know offer some proper ventilation it's going to go anaerobic we have a bunch of pallets. Notice that this part is really completely open and this is not, but it still has some slits. That is why we use the landscape fabric because we can contain all of not only the moisture, but the wood chips and manure and anything else. If we're gonna be adding any rain to this or adding any other extra materials, it would not seep out through the pallets. So I think this was a great design. You know, the pallets are free. You can really get pallets for free and not be charged anything at all. You just find, you know, got to find your local stores that are giving them away. Your local churches are giving them away somewhere. There's always a free pallet to be found. You can always find free pallets everywhere. So this costed me zero dollars. The landscape fabric you would have to buy. But if you already have it like me, I've, I've had this landscape fabric for at least two years already. So that means technically this cost free. After you've done filling up this entire bioreactor with your lasagna compost, you got some compost, water, veggie scraps, manure, and then repeat the process. Then after that, now we wait and wait and wait and wait and wait some more. I'm going to be waiting at least a year for this minimum. What you really want to do is to be continuously watering it from the top. Like I've heard other channels say that they can have irrigation running all of this. If you have access to a hose and constantly spraying this down, that would be ideal. Um, I am not doing that because again, my water bill is a little on the crazy side. So I'm just kind of letting mother nature and occasionally hosing this down. Now, will this take a lot longer to decompose? Yes, it will. Is that a hawk? Oh, ADHD moment. Is that gonna take a long time to decompose inside of this bioreactor? Yes, it is. It may take a few months longer, but then again, I could always probably do some more watering on top. I do not know how deep or far that water is going to go. That is why when you're building up this lasagna compost, you're going to be watering every single layer because once you, like, let's just say you started to water on top, the water is not going to penetrate deep down into the compost like you wanted to. I'm hoping for a lot of fungal activity inside of this compost. I'm assuming, now correct me if I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments below if I said anything incorrect. I'm hoping that I'm banking on the fact that we're having a lot of oxygen running through this compost using those mesh tubes. Now I'm hoping that that would promote a lot more fungal activity of fungal decomposing of the materials and that's what I'm going for. Remember, I believe that only happens in aerobic conditions, which means you need oxygen. If this goes anaerobic, which means we do not have enough oxygen and those mesh tubes that you put inside of it gets clogged up, maybe something, you know, something blocks all that airway, it's gonna turn anaerobic, which means no oxygen, which means you're gonna get the bad stuff, the bad bacteria and all that. That's where the smell comes into play. That is where you're gonna get the flies, the maggots. You don't want that at all. So I'm hoping for good things. Am I gonna wait long for this? You're damn right. I'm gonna to have to wait about a year. 
if not a little bit more than this. So I guess we're going to find out one year from now. But stay tuned for my upcoming other different uh, projects that I have going on when it comes to composting and what to do with all these wood chips. I really hope you got some good information out of this. I know that I'm learning this just as just along with you guys but hey I'm willing to you know just try it out and let's just experiment nothing if it goes wrong it's okay we are learning we can call this and just chalk it up to an experiment and that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing but that also means stay tuned in the future if you click on my channel you will definitely you know hopefully come along with the ride with a lot of my future projects when it comes to wood chips more composting and all that fun stuff until the next episode you guys where you and me both gonna be growing our happiness one plant at a time one day at a time check y'all later Peace and love.